from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for January 25th, 2016. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready to get started with trading for this week. In today's video, I am going to do a general overview of each of the seven major U.S. currency pairs in antici anticipation of this week's trading. First off, starting here on the USD CHF, the U.S. dollar versus the Swiss franc. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been studying the uptrend channel that you see here on the chart, the daily time frame, the rising blue trend line, the rising black trend line. We've just been bouncing around inside that channel for a couple of weeks now, approaching now the top of that channel, the top of the black trend line and the top of the channel, which would be up here closer likely towards the 1.0200 level in the orange shaded area at the top of the chart. A couple of things to point out through the trend pattern that we've seen over the past couple of months, actually going back into October and November of 2015. First off, the red circle back here where we saw the market hold between the pink and the green shaded area, left-hand side of the blue trend line. So the red circle, we saw the market bouncing around, broke out, went to the yellow shaded area. Then it went into this little black box where it bounced around between the black box, uh, bottom and top, the yellow and the orange shaded area. Well, what's interesting about that is if you bring that back to the right-hand side of the chart, you see the blue circle duplicating where the red circle was. We've seen the breakout of the blue circle, the green shaded area, and move to the yellow shaded area in a very similar fashion to what we saw back here on the very left-hand side of the chart. So if we use historical price action to determine future price action, we can say that as long as it stays above this 1.0125 to 1.0150 level, the yellow shaded area that we're seeing here on the chart, there's a good likelihood it takes a turn towards the orange shaded area at least back into the 0200, 0235 level and the top of our channel that we're seeing here for the U.S. franc. Let's take it on down to the four hour chart. So what we're going to be looking for is some confirmation at the market to stay above the yellow shaded area, which it's of course doing today. So for the day today, what we'll be looking for is that staying above the yellow zone and the potential target back up here towards the orange shaded area. So buying on top of 0150, we'll look to target 0200 here for the U.S. franc this early part of the week. The risk in this scenario, of course, is that the market changes its mind, breaks underneath the 0125 level under the yellow shaded area, and we look for it to head back down here into the 0070, 0050 level, the green shaded area that you see down here towards the next lower level of the long-term channel. So that's what we're going to look for today, staying above the yellow zone, target the orange zone, and of course above there, we could even see it back to the top of the chart, back into this uh, last high that we see up here, if I could get that uh, green shaded area selected. We'll pull that over. That could be our next target, the last high that we've seen here for the U.S. franc uh, over the past several months. Going over here to the euro dollar, similar yet opposite scenario. We've seen this downward facing channel, not quite as dramatic as we've seen on the franc. We've seen it actually challenging inside this black box for several days. Let's zoom it in here on the daily time frame. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve trading days. So almost two weeks worth of time bouncing around inside this black box. What's interesting to point out here is we saw one to three attempts to break at the top side and was unable to false breakouts to the top. We've seen one, two, three, maybe even four false breakouts to the bottom. But today's the first daily candle, the first daily candle on the daily time frame that has opened outside that black box in several days, a couple of weeks. So that's the most important part about this currency pair today is that we're underneath that green shaded area, the 0800 level is being challenged. And if the market stays underneath here, that gives us a higher expectation that we look for this to continue lower back down to the blue shaded area at the bottom of the chart. That's important for today's trading. Staying underneath here, we sell towards the blue zone. We'll look at that here on the four-hour chart in a moment. And again, that's just the opposite of the U.S. franc. The risk here, of course, is a break back above the green zone. It's a false breakout, 0850. We look for it to go back up and stay within our black box and the, the, the range for the time being. But this is going to be very interesting this first part of the week. Four-hour time frame, again, you can see four-hour candlesticks underneath the green shaded area. If you're going to do anything on the euro dollar today, it's selling underneath 0815. Risk is likely up here closer towards the 0855, 60 level above the green zone. And again, from here, you're going to target back down to the blue zone, which is all the way into the low 1.0740 to 0712 level, the blue shaded area, for the euro dollar today. 
Moving on to the GBPUSD, we've actually seen a little bit of a rally over the past three or four days here for this currency pair, a long-term downtrend. This was a significant fall here for the pound dollar, all the way from the 51, 5200 level down here into the 4,000, 4100 level. So very interesting fall that we've seen here for the pound dollar. But like I said, we've seen a little bit of rally over the past few days. Zooming in, in there's that rally. Significant resistance level, the green zone, 42. 50 to 4285 that's the green shaded area let's go ahead and take it on down to the four hour time frame zoom it out a little bit we've seen it a little bit above it we're back down inside that green zone if we stay within or above this green zone we'll likely look at least for the turn back to the blue shaded area if the market breaks underneath the green zone we'll call it uh, 4250 then we look for the turn back lower that makes sense when you're looking at the euro and the franc the correlation before the US dollar you would expect if the euro is going down the the pound dollar would go down and vice versa the US franc would go up so again very interesting scenario here I think it's interesting sitting above the 4250 level today we might even be looking for some further movement higher here for the pound dollar this week U.S. CAD, we saw a significant fall last week, a significant pull all the way back down here into the 4100 level. Uh, oh, just over a three-day period, we saw it fall from the 4600 level down to 4100. So significant fall here for the uh, U.S. CAD. But is it over? Are we going to see the continuation lower? Are we going to see uh, oil continue to go down? All of that is significant here for us here on the U.S. CAD. I point out this red trend line down here, the fall that the market took, and then a eventually turning back in the direction of the longer term trend, which of course has clearly been up. Very interesting look here on the weekly time frame. Look at that candle there. We would call that an engulfing candle where it opened higher than the previous candle, closed lower than the lower candle. That would imply some further movement lower, but we just want some more confirmation, lower highs and lower, here, lower lows. Take a look at the daily time frame. Again, we don't have any significant lower highs right now. We have three falling candles, but not really any significant lower resistance. So I would think if we're looking to go short here, it's shorting on rallies to resistance. The creation of a new lower high gives us a clue that we're looking for further movement down. We have a low. Now we see, need to see a lower high. Could be the yellow zone, 4200. May even be all the way back up here into the mid to upper 43s, the purple shaded area, before we start to see it go back down. Four hour time frame. In the shorter time frame, if you're going to attempt any uh, short opportunities here, I think for the day today, you're looking at this yellow zone here. We're looking at 4180 to 42 200 or so that's the yellow shaded area then of course you're going to target the blue shaded area on the way back down uh, that's really the the most significant opportunity for the day today the risk of course is that it breaks above the yellow zone and starts turning back higher again and retracing much some or much of the fall from last week one last thing here on the cad let's take fibonacci from the high down to the current low 236 sits at 4249 that's the top of our yellow shaded area, 382, 4333, bottom of the purple shaded area. So you can see where your significant resistance levels are today. Those become your opportunities for the first part of the week on the U.S. CAD. Moving over to the U.S. Yen. A little bit of a change in the pattern here, but I don't want to get too excited about it because over the past couple of weeks, we've seen false breakouts outside the bottom of this black box. Look, we've been studying this range between the green zone, 118.30, the purple zone, 117.30. We've been studying that for a few weeks now. It made one, two, three, four, five daily candles attempted to break underneath. False breakouts turned back higher again. We're seeing a breakout today. Is this going to be a real deal or a false breakout? So we need to see some confirmation. But I would think that if it gets above 1875, the green zone, we're easily looking for it back here into the mid 119s, even towards one. 20 here for the US yen back underneath the green shaded area if it gets back underneath that level we uh, which is 11830 we could be looking for the turn back lower once again four hour time frame look at this very interesting the bottom of that green zone 11830 you follow it back in time and you can see the resistance highs that we're sitting on top of right now. So I would think, at least for the day today, this becomes a buy scenario. Uh, sitting on top of 118.30, look for the break of 118.75. And again, your target for any buys that you might take, look for 119.50 to 119.80, the blue shaded area, for your profit target on the U.S. yen. 
Moving on to the AUD-USD, uh, we saw a significant rebound last week here for the Australian dollar. But remember, let's not forget the long-term trend pe pattern that we've been studying. The long-term downtrend, the triangle pattern inside the red triangle down at the bottom right-hand side of the chart. We saw last week the breakout underneath it. This week... Uh, we saw we were seeing a little bit of a rebound from last week, uh, so definitely some interesting information here. I think we still want to focus in on the the fall here in the direction of the downtrend uh, daily time frame. Again, there's your triangle here. Uh, again, a couple of weeks ago we saw the breakout last week, a little bit of a rebound within there. I still think selling rallies to resistance is still a fundamental expectation that I would have here for this pair. Look for 7,000, 7,020, the pink shaded area to be your resistance level today. Uh, you look for this yellow shaded area down here that's closer towards the uh, 69.25 to 69.45 level. I'm trying to get that yellow zone uh, selected so I can draw it over a little bit further. Uh, this yellow zone 69.45 to 69.20, 25 becomes your potential support. Very interesting potential inverted head and shoulder setup so I would think at least you're looking at support here at the yellow zone the break of that head and shoulders comes on a push underneath the yellow zone 6920 we're back down into the lows into the 6800 so some key areas to watch for the day today and one more arrow let's put it here at the pink zone within and below the pink zone as we have it drawn out here we look for targets back to the yellow zone or possibly or the return of the downtrend. Anything above the pink zone, 7,000, 7,025, we look for the continued rally and retracement of this last downtrend leg for the Australian dollar. A couple of Fibonacci notes here, Fib, from this high right here, and I'll put a black X there. Right there where the black X is down to the lowest low on the chart puts the 236 Fib at 69.44. Of course, we're above that. 382, guess what? We're right here at 7,017, right in the midst of our pink shaded area. Then a little bit higher, 50%, sits right here inside this little green shaded area that you see, 618 up at the blue shaded area, closer to the moving average. So Fibonacci is identifying the yellow, the pink, the green, and the blue as significant uh, levels here for the... Uh, Australian dollar today. We'll continue to watch that throughout the week. But if you're doing anything today, potential resistance pink zone, support yellow zone, those will be the areas that you're going to focus in on for the day today on the Australian dollar. And lastly, on to the NZD USD New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. We saw a false breakout a couple of times last week, didn't we? A push underneath the black box, false breakout, push back higher. Push above the black box, above the blue zone, false breakout. Now we're back inside the blue shaded area. So we haven't seen a significant breakout. Now the trend is down. We can even take it out here to the weekly chart and describe the downtrend there uh, as the long-term red trend line. We saw the rally in the midst of the trend, the fall, the rally. Now we're at the fall stages again. So definitely focused in on the downside still here on the US, uh, on, on the NZD USD. Significant area, the red box right in the middle of the chart. Res uh, support back here on the, the left offering us a clue to resistance. 64, 75, 6500 is our clue to resistance based on the historical support that you see here. As long as it's within or below that blue shaded area, I think we're looking for the return of the downtrend back to the purple zone and maybe even the new low made here for the New Zealand dollar. Only if we get a significant open and close above 6,500 will I expect us to see a continued pressure higher. 64, or down to the four hour time frame, this area around the 64, 75, 6,500, we did see the push above it on the four hour time frame, but I'm just not really yet in the mood to, uh, to uh, trust this yet since we haven't seen the daily open and close above there. Inverted head and shoulders, possibility, maybe even back down here towards the purple shaded area could give us a clue to that into the 6430, 6400 level. Anything underneath there would uh, invalidate that pattern. Uh, within or below the blue zone, as I said, I think we're still looking for some more downside here for the New Zealand dollar. Only if we get a daily open and close above 6500 am I going to start to trust the upside here for the New Zealand dollar this week. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.